Pardon you crazy kids, it's Thursday, November 21st, 2019, and you're watching The Daily Mix TV. Hi, my name is Sean Patrick Hillman. As usual, Target knows exactly how to maximize its brand and business. Unlike struggling competitors, Target has not only reported higher sales in the third quarter, they've actually found a way to increase the value of their online sales. Target, as many have called it, saw online revenue surge 31% in the quarter. That is incredible. Most of that, believe it or not, coming from cheaper fulfillment options. These include filling orders from the back of stores instead of from a distribution center, store or curbside pickup, which we've talked about a lot on the Daily Mix, and delivery through Target's own shipped service. That's as opposed to using FedEx or UPS, that kind of thing. Now, the retailer is faring better than Kohl's or Walmart, and they've benefited from opening smaller outlets in major urban metros like New York City. So as an example, there's a much smaller Target opening up at Columbus Circle on the north side of the circle. And the noise around it is massive. So for Target, their expansion and internal streamlining are clearly working. When you look at a 31% jump in a quarter, that's an incredible number. And a lot of that has to do with their mix of business and marketing intelligence and how that all inter intertwines to deliver a much better experience, certainly better revenue results. Oh man, things are getting ugly in Motor City. General Motors has hit Fiat Chrysler with a racketeering lawsuit, alleging that the car maker conspired with three of its own executives to repeatedly undermine General Motors' negotiations with the United Auto Workers Union. The result was to leave America's biggest automaker at a competitive disadvantage, with GM paying more in labor costs than its competitors over more than a decade. Now, Fiat Chrysler has denied these allegations. Some of their executives have already been charged, along with eight others, as part of an ongoing federal corruption probe of the union and the auto industry. This news could not come at a worse time for Detroit. At the end of the day, car sales are down for a whole lot of reasons. And when you look at American automotive, you know, it's it roared back for a long time after the Great Recession. Then it started to fall again. When you look at surging fuel prices right now in states like California and so on, you run into a lot of issues with people not buying a new car because, frankly, they just don't have enough money. And... When you look at General Motors' sales that have been going down, and a lot of that has to do with the issues they've been faced this year with their union negotiations, as well as the fact that Ford, of all brands, has decided to eliminate almost all pa uh, passenger vehicles with the exception of SUVs, trucks, and their Mustang platform. So there's a lot of things going on in, in Motor City right now. I mean, Fiat Chrysler is looking to acquire uh, Peugeot, and bring that to the United States from, from France. And, I mean, we've talked about that before. Peugeot is a great brand. But if Fiat Chrysler is going through this right now in terms of a federal corruption probe, I have a feeling that's going to get in the way of that acquisition. But only time will tell. Could the little blue box become an LVMH brand after all? LVMH has increased its offer for Tiffany & Company, according to people who've been briefed on the talks, prompting the iconic U.S. jeweler, to open its books to the luxury goods giant. That therefore ups the odds of a deal. The new takeover offer has been set at $130 a share, according to those sources, valuing Tiffany's at about $15.8 billion, including $350 million in net debt. So the two sides have been talking for several weeks. LVMH, which owns you know Louis Vuitton, Dior, Sephora, Moet Hennessy, they're looking to add the U.S. maker of diamond engagement rings to its portfolio of products. It will only shore up and increase the brand equity for LVMH corporate as well as its sub-brand. So for LVMH, this is an incredibly important acquisition. It will give them a nice bump in the U.S. But again, we got to wait and see what happens. Pop-Tart lovers have something to celebrate. The Battle Creek, base, uh, Michigan-based company is taking a sweet and salty approach to snacking with their new Pop-Tarts pretzel. Featuring the classic sweetness of the toaster pastries, the new flavor features slight saltiness from a pretzel crust 
and comes in two flavors, chocolate and cinnamon sugar. Quote, Pop-Tarts is always ingeniously creating new ways to enjoy familiar loved foods. With the debut of Pop-Tarts Pretzel, we fixed a snacking staple and added two more delicious options to our lineup of flavors. And that was uh, Joe Beauprez, who's the marketing director for Pop-Tarts. Now, don't get too excited yet, folks. I mean, you're not going to see this in your stocking at Christmas. You're not going to have it as your breakfast snack, you know, during uh, Black Friday. Pop-Tarts Pretzel won't be available until January 2020 when it hits shelves nationwide for $3.49. Flavor programming, and I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum on the Daily Mix TV. Flavor programming is a great way to increase your brand equity and grow your brand. So when you look at Pop-Tarts and some of their flavors like s'mores and those kinds of things, I mean, look, I'm a Pop-Tarts fan. I probably eat them once or twice a year. Uh, I absolutely love them. But, you know, of course, when you look at something like Pop-Tarts pretzel, and I'm a huge pretzel nut, yeah, I'm going to be buying these in January. My point to you folks is, at the end of the day, if you know your audience and you know what their behavior patterns are through marketing research, if you look at trends, if you watch what's going on with your consumer, being able to develop a flavor against that to expand your revenue and to also expand your shelf space, hopefully at retail, is a very, very great, is a very, very good tool in order for you to help grow your brand. So love the fact that they're doing pretzel, especially when you, you factor in chocolate and cinnamon sugar. Those are two great flavor complements in terms of that salt and uh, sweet and salty uh, profile. So can't wait to give it a shot. All right. Uh, you know, this story just keeps getting worse and worse. L Brands has reported a steep loss for its third quarter as sales continue to fall at Victoria's Secret. The retailer's net loss totaled $252 million or 91 cents a share in the quarter that ended on November 2nd, compared with the loss of $43 million or 16 cents a share in the year ago quarter. So year over year, they're actually doing worse. Adjusted earnings came to two cents a share in line with analysts' estimates uh, compared with 16 cents a share a year ago. Now, sales fell to 2.67 billion from 2.77 billion a year ago. Analysts had expected 2.69. So total comparable sales, and that's for stores and direct, fell 2%. By brand, same store sales fell 7% of Victoria's Secret compared to a decline of 2% in the year ago period. So this is not going well for L Brands at all. And the majority of loss is being driven by Victoria's Secret, which was once a bulletproof business. Now, same store sales, just to give you an idea, a juxtaposition within the L Brands family of brands, same store sales rose 9% at Bath & Body Works. So L Brands has been working to turn around Victoria's Secret for a little while. They've had a hard time finding its footing in the Me Too era. Consumers are increasingly opting out for lingerie brands that emphasize comfort, inclusion, and diversity, which a lot of people have cited Victoria's Secret flat out does not do. I would argue that point, just to be fair, if you look at any of Victoria's Secret's marketing, if you look at their fashion show, they have a wide array of color and creed on that runway and in those pages. So I don't know in terms of diversity that I agree with that. Comfort, I would know. Inclusion, I mean, that really does go along with diversity. So when you look at brands like Third Love, Lively, American Eagles, Airy, you know, they have the same style of, of or the same, I would say, ethnic makeup in their marketing. What they don't, what they have that Victoria's Secret doesn't have is more plus size oriented models. And that's a big problem given what's going on in pop culture right now and in the market. So all of that being said, to make matters even worse, L Brands marketing chief Edward Razik, an architect of Victoria's Secret's sexy image, has left the company. And the brand is not going to air its annual fashion extravaganza on national TV this year. So the challenge for Victoria's Secret really lies in its DNA. It is a throwback to a time when that kind of marketing worked. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's the same approach the beer companies used 
to use uh, used to use with a sexy woman looking seductively at the camera with a can of beer or on the hood of a car, like that kind of thing. Victoria's Secret needed to evolve and quickly, but they failed to do the one thing that would have set them apart. My advice at that time would have been to launch a new education and mentoring program that gives young women the opportunity to learn about fashion or modeling, content creation, those kinds of things. L Brands could have become a source for education and mentorship. And yes, I know my, my dog Snickers is barking in the background. But instead, they continued down the same road they had been on and failed to make the right turn at the right time. So when you look at what's going on with respect to Victoria's Secret, it is a big problem for an iconic brand like that. So I'm hoping, you know, Les Wexner, who is the CEO and founder, I'm praying to God that he finds a better way. PayPal Holdings wants in on the total customer experience. At least that's what you have to conclude from their latest and largest acquisition to date. The payments giant has agreed to acquire Honey Science Corporation for $4 billion. Honey is a browser add-on an app which allows customers to track prices and find coupons for particular products. The company said it plans to integrate some of Honey's features into the PayPal and Venmo apps. Now, the acquisition will give PayPal earlier involvement in the customer shopping journey. It'll also enhance PayPal's ability to help merchants acquire and convert consumers by delivering offers that are personalized, timely, and optimized across channels. Now, with approximately 17 million monthly active users, Honey said it currently works across approximately 30,000 online retailers, ranging from fashion and technology to travel and even pizza delivery. Quote, Honey is amongst the most transformative acquisitions in PayPal's history. It provides a broad portfolio of services to simplify the consumer shopping experience, while at the same time making it more affordable and rewarding. The combination of Honey's complementary consumer products with our platform will significantly enhance our ability to drive engagement and play a more meaningful role in the daily lives of our consumers. For PayPal, this is absolutely brilliant. You know, a few years ago, PayPal had started making inroads into retail, and they had gone to some of the big boxers for online payment using PayPal Direct as opposed to a credit card or a debit card. And for PayPal, they started featuring retailers on their website. They started doing marketing deals with those companies, that kind of thing. So for them, this really does expand their ability to target consumers early in the process when they're making that, that very important decision to purchase after inquiring about a product. And when you get brand impact like this, such as what PayPal is about to do, brilliant move because all it does is expand your sphere of influence all right kids for this week's throwback thursday on this day 43 years ago this legendary franchise's first film hit theaters The film that no one thought would be a success, It Was the Underdog, was filmed on a $1 million budget and delivered $225 million in box office receipts, resulting in a TKO to the competition and the launch of an incredible and timeless franchise. Starring Sylvester Stallone, you know, Rocky has really withstood the test of time, and it's one of those very rare film franchises that you, no matter how many years later you watch it, it still hits close to home. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the editor-in-chief of The Daily Mix TV. Thanks for watching, folks. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, please email thedailymixtv at gmail.com. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Friday.